Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I have two very prominent members of the 1966 and 67 team here with me. On my right, I have John Green here, present County Board Secretary, and I'll ask John's view what he thought about the 1966 and 67 teams. Well, 66 and 67, it's the start of the whole lot um, of the success the club have had for the last 25 years. Um, there's a bunch of young lads that had come together from juvenile, school by juvenile up, uh, won a nine aside championship, minor championship in 66. Uh, most of those played on that 66 junior team. Uh, the following year we won the minor championship in 67 and uh, practically all of them played on the intermediate team of that year. And um, the success that the club have had since then has been phenomenal in the last 25 years. John, you were one of the younger members of the team playing at midfield in a big county final. What did you feel yourself on the day? Well, sorry, I don't remember that much now about what it was. It was a great experience that time as a young fellow to um, play. Um, I think then we enjoyed playing the football more than they do now. It's more of a chore to have to do these days. Then we enjoyed it and it was something you did. It was seven days a week. We lived with it. As you know, Shem, I mean, we spent most of the time in your house preparing and talking about it and wondering what we were going to do like that. Um, it's hard to remember exactly what we felt. It was a great feeling of elation when we won a junior championship. It was the first thing the club had won for a long, long time. Like it had been a down in the dumps for a while. And we came back that time and it was great. It was a great bunch of young players and we had a great time. And we enjoyed it. And we enjoyed each other's company. One of the marvellous times we had then. Like, you know, there was a 10-year spell there, which was unbelievable. From 65 to 75, like the, what we won with us, finishing up with the senior championship in, in 74. It was a marvellous achievement. Um, thank you very much, John. Um, John was one of the younger members of the team that year and played an outstanding game in both junior and intermediate. Thanks very much, John. Thank you, On my left, I have Kieran Schuess, another member of the panel, which played in both finals and left corner back. Kieran, what do you remember about those matches? Well, I could uh, just maybe tell you that I remember two things, particularly about the same, about the time. Uh, one was, uh, I recall it tonight on several occasions, was uh, the humiliation that Granard, Granard gave us as young fellas uh, back in, I suppose, 64, 63, 64, as schoolboys. I think it was the lasting memory we had, and we were going to get them back sometime. And we, uh, we spent our time, I guess, training hard, and... Uh, got to the junior final in 1966. Um, but the, the second memory really of, of we I had was the, the fantastic support that we had as young fellas on that team from some of the older members. I'm not really talking about the, the next generation, I'm talking the ones beyond that again. I'm talking about uh, Scotty Green and all the others. Fantastic support. And they really showed us how to play football. And they really gave us uh, the heart to go ahead and beat that Granite team in 66. Like John talks about the Nine Niner side and there was a great team, Niner side team that John was a part of and Harry, Harry and all the boys. And then the team after that in 67, and then other 21 teams after that were fantastic, and uh, I think that was the start of it. What do you think of coming back here tonight, meeting all your old pals after 25 years? Well, I got the invitation about a month ago, and I thought it was just a fantastic thing to do. And I didn't realize that I know so many people. It was just brilliant. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't more a part of the, the club for the last uh, 25 years. I should have been, perhaps. Uh, I'm really sorry I didn't take more a part of it. Thank you very much, Kieran. Kieran is now resident down in Castlebar in the County Mayo. Thank you. John Green for one more second. He has something else to say to us. John. I would like to pay a tribute to the club for organising this night. As Kieran said, it's marvellous that I was all back here together. I think there's only four missing out of a possible 34 people. And I'd like to thank the club sincerely for their efforts tonight in organising this function. It'd be marvellous for us to come back and be here, like, you know. And I hope it gives some encouragement to the young fellas that are here tonight to go forward and win something. I think Father Sean Hegarty was brilliant in there tonight. And I think like that those lads should go on. There's plenty of talent in the club. There's no doubt about it. They should win a senior championship with the young. If they put the right effort into it, they should win it. Thank you very much. With uh, on the 14th and 16th this year, we have a bright future in Master and Football. Thanks to John on my right here, and also thanks to Kieran on my left. Thank you very much, lads. Uh, we're turning the tables a little bit on Seamus Smith here, who has been doing the interviews. Seamus, of course, was a celebrated member of both the 66 and 67 team. He was a wing half back on the 66 team and a glorious full forward on the 67 team. Seamus, what's your memories? What's your memories of those days, 66? Well, John, I was one of the best days of my life actually when we won the under 60 or the, when we won the junior final in 66. The really funny part of that match I remember was that. Um, Phil Donahue was playing with Abilar on that day and um, he was having a blinder in the first half. He had scored a goal on two points in about the first ten minutes of the game. 
And some fella from the stand shouted out, stop that, you know what, don't know who. So Paddy Casey and myself truly uh, answered the compliment, and Phil didn't play so well after that, and we went on to win the game. That's my memory of that game. I think an interesting statistic. We had won the senior championship before Abby Lara won the junior after, which is an amazing record. Um, about the 67, Seamus, you got a change of position. You were moved up to the full forward line. And I think what was a tactical switch, which was unheard of in those days. What's your memories of that? Well, I don't really think they were looking for height then when they put me into the full forwards. I think it was more speed and to put me in there because I had played a few good games earlier on in the championship full forward. And um, they moved me in there for the final and I'd done quite well. Scored an equalising point and I don't remember much more about it after that. Uh, Seamus, as you know, trained all the underage teams in Edgbaston for the last couple of years with tremendous success. So he has stayed in, totally involved in the club and I'm sure he'll have great success in the years to come. Uh, thank you very much, Seamus. I have two more members of that 1966 panel here with me. Eddie on my left played on both 66 and 67 at wing half forward. And I'd like Eddie's opinion of um, what he remembers of both of those games. Well, 66, Phil Dunham scored a goal in the point in the first five minutes. Sky Green, Northern Mercy, you know, not with us today. But set him over in the second half. And he was one of the flyers of his time on that team. I think he scored a couple of points in that game, Eddie. And Harry Devine, I think, scored a winning goal. Or Pat's That's beside me here, here beside you, scored a winning goal in that game. Pat came out of the sub in that game, and he scored a great goal. So I'll ask Pat's uh, opinion on what he thought about that game. Well, uh, all I can remember about it really was I wasn't a member of the team actually that day. I didn't train or anything because I was getting married a week after, I think. And you had other things in your mind, Pat? I had other things in my mind. But Jimmy Brady said to me, will you strip quick and get in? He said, this game, we were nearly gone, he says. So I was going in, and Hagen was about to take a sideline kick. And he said to me, get into the square quick. I'm going to drop this into the parlour, he said. And he said, if it breaks, he says, it's a goal. Because you scored. And I did. And that was the goal that brought us on to win the, uh, the uh, junior championship. The thing is that they're gone so far, and I hope they go further, and take about 12 more in the next 20 years. Pat is resident in Ballymahan now over there. And are you involved in the club in Ballymahan in any way, Pat? No, I'm not involved anymore in football. Well, thanks very much, Pat, for your time. Back to Nelly for a second. Have you got any last comments, Ned, before we finish uh, up? Uh, on the 66, 67. Uh, proud to be on the team to win the two, both the uh, junior and intermediate. And we went on to win the 69 special competition. We won the Leader Cup in 70. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't on the 74 senior championship team. But present day, Nelly has an army of sons who's playing outstanding football for the tip club at the moment. And tonight, um, one of his sons, Damien, received Clubman of the Year, which is some achievement. I bet you're a proud man of that, Ned. Proud on you now. Thanks very much, Ned and Pat. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two more members of this Victoria 66 and 67 team. On my left, I have Paddy Casey. Paddy that time was known as the hard man of the full back line. And I see him dressed up tonight here, which is a change. Brand new suit. I don't know who paid for it, but he has it on him anyway. Paddy, can you remember much about the 66 championship final? I can, yeah. It was a great honour to be on the team and a great bunch of lads and I enjoyed every minute of it. Honest. I think um, you have a little story to tell us about Phil Dunno. Phil was playing in opposition that day. And I think you have a little story to tell us about what went on with Phil Dunno that day. 25 years ago. Let's hear about it. Yeah, Phil um, was playing full forward that day and he had a goal and a couple of points scored in a few minutes so we had to take a bit of action to, uh, that that wouldn't occur again. So He took the proper action. I think he got the orders from the fellow on my right here. Yeah. Brian Smith who played on the half back line and both winning teams uh, on the uh, 66 and 67. Can you remember much about that game, Brian? Any of those games? Well... I remember that it was a great achievement to be part of that 66-67 era and um, it was, it was um, probably one of the best achievements that we probably ever, even better than the 1974-74 uh, uh, championship that we won later on, but um, there was, the scenes were mighty in the town that particular Sunday evening and I think I'll always remember it and there was only one thing I remember leading up to the junior championship, I think it was the match against Mullinocta that uh, Eddie Duffy was
part of the game at that time and we were playing with Yonakta and it's the biggest memory I have of it and we're playing with Yonakta and uh, Eddie was marking Larry Cunningham which was a famous moving up the charts at the time with, the, with a band at the time and I remember Eddie saying to Larry he said you'll play no 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 you'll sing none tonight Larry he said <laughs> so like uh, apart from that anyway it was it was, um, it was a great achievement to be involved Eddie was threatening him in other words so I'll go back here to Paddy for another second Paddy at the moment is very much involved with the underage football and he's also three sons who's been playing won everything in front of him this year under 16 under 14 um, Paddy you to say about the underage no, they're, they're a great bunch of lads the year, apart from the boys playing with them and the whole lot of them, the school gossips were outstanding and that's who have to thank yourself, Shamin, for all the work you put into it and we, um, I was there giving you a hand but shouting and everything and kept the thing going along So thanks Paddy and Brian, thank you very much <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have two more members of this Victoria 66-67 team on my right I have the kid brother here John, who was one of the babies of the team at that time, and on my left I have Tony here on my left, the smiling man. So I'd like Tony's um, memory of the '66 final. Um, uh, my memories are very uh, weak now, but uh, <laughs> I was a good subman and I were for a few years. <laughs> John, uh, John, come here. Come on, come on. John, come um, Tony. Do you remember anything more that you were a good sub? You had some good games leading up to the final, I remember well. I don't remember a lot now about it anyway, but uh, there were good days anyway, that's all I remember about. You enjoying the crack here tonight, meeting all your old pals after 25 years? I thought half of them would be dead, but they're all alive and great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Tony. <laughs> Tony Paddy here. Yeah. A few more Paddy. On my right here I have Phil Donahoe. Phil, in the 66 final, was one of the opposition. You heard his name coming up a good few times tonight over the Blackguarders and Paddy Casey carried on with them. And I'd like Phil's um, remembrance of the 66th match when he was playing in opposition to us. Phil. Well, Shame, I remember the match very well. And you mentioned a moment ago about Paddy Casey's. <laughs> uh, I think it was Shamey Smith was involved too. I remember distinctly getting sandwiched between the two of them. And I know for a long time after that, I didn't know which way I was playing, and that's true. But I think, hey, lucky enough, before that, I think I scored a goal and a pint or two. But I didn't score much after I got sandwiched between Shamie Smith and Paddy Casey. But anyway, I was delighted afterwards to sort of come to Edgerstown and live in Edgerstown and, and become a member of the Edgerstown Club and play with Edgerstown the following year in the, and to be, have won an intermediate championship with Edgerstown and to be in, involved in um, the Edgerstown Club since then. Thank you, Phil. Um you said that you got sandwiched a bit in during the 66 game. I think it was um, a couple of rowdies from the sideline gave us that cue. Well, I don't know who the, where the cue came from, Shamey, but all I remember is getting sandwiched anywhere. Uh, and I, as I said, after that, I wasn't sure at some stage of the game or at any stage of the game which way I was playing, so I got well and truly sandwiched. But I remember I was playing on Scotty Green, Lord be good to him, as Scotty was full back. And I think on that day, I think he was playing with a broken or a fractured arm. And on that day, he was 46 years of age. And I think it was a tremendous compliment to Scotty and showed the, what the man was made of, that at 46 years of age, he could still play fullback for Edgerstown and win his uh, junior championship medal and play with a broken arm through most of the game. Unfortunately, I didn't know that till the game was nearly over, or I might have had another goal or two. But uh, anyway, it, it was a great to be involved uh, with Edgerstown at the time. And... Um, since then. Well, Paddy Casey said your missus nearly never talked to him since that crack. So um, thanks very much, Phil, for your entry, for your time. And I'll, on my left here now I have Tom O'Doughlin, chairman of the club, who's been involved in the club way back since 66 and before, and still the man at the helm. Tom, can you remember much about the 66-67 match? Uh, I can vividly remember the 66, well, both of them. I can... The 66 match, we were uh, a far better team all the time, and yes, we made very heavy work. We made very heavy work of winning it. Uh, possibly we were lucky in the end to get a goal and win it. Uh, Pat, Queen Pat, uh, Pat Queen, he went into one of those mystery tours with the ball and he finished up scoring a goal. But the 67 final, uh, we overran Cashel completely in the first half. Uh, we had the advantage of a strong breeze, and uh, personally, I remember my duel with John Donlan. John was the, one of the top players with the county at the time, and I spent a whole 45 minutes watching John Donlan. 
not doing very much, but it kept at a pint when we were finished up a pint or two down. I says, the hell with John Dahl and I'm going to look for the ball. And we got it up to couple and get John Green got it and we, we, we got three pints in succession. Uh, Paddy Noonan got two of them, you got one of them. And I, I, actually, I didn't, wasn't sure of the score. It was that close and exciting. I wasn't even sure what the score was. You know, it was, uh, we won it, thanks be to God. And we, we, we're still the only club that has put a junior and intermediate back to back. No one that, even Abilara took them about seven years to win the junior championship from that year. They didn't win until sometime in the 70s, 73. So that was, that was what, seven years down the road before they won a junior championship. And we went on with this, practically the same team and won the intermediate the following year. So it shows you what the whole secret of success is winning something and build on what you win. So that's all, but that's my recollections of it, Seamus. And I remember you, the intermediate final, I remember it was about the intermediate final. You, you came out and caught a, it would catch a ball and hit your chest and went back about 100 yards down the field. Hello. Yes, I remember that. Run out. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks very much, Tom. Uh, on my right, I have Sean Logan here beside me. When Sean was full back in that 1967 intermediate team. Sean, what do you remember about that final? Well, uh, not a lot, Chairman, but uh, I remember John Dunn gave me a bit of a roast in the last few minutes. He came in full forward in the last 10 minutes after coming off Tom, and he gave me a bit of a roast. And, uh, the, the most I remember about it is... Uh, I think John Hughes scored 1-9 in that final, or something around 1-9 that day. Uh, but uh, the best recollection I have is John Hughes scoring a pint out from under the, the, the um, uh, from the far side, the, the, the tunnels on that side now. That's all my best remember, memories of it. You said that John Donnelly gave you a run around. I don't think too many footballers in the county ever gave you a run around, John. Well, um, not as far as fitness was concerned, uh, they didn't give me too mu much of a run round, but John Donnan was a good footballer and he was a hard footballer to play on. John was playing county football for Longford at the time. Oh yeah, in 67, sure, he's one of the um, top men in the county at, in 67, one of the best centre half-backs maybe in Ireland at that time. Sure. Thank you very much, John. On my left I have Jackie Devine. Jackie Devine is no stranger to the camera, not like I am here. Jackie won uh, National Football League in 1966 won um, senior Leinster Senior Championship in 1968 and has been a great member of the Mastrum Club for 25 years or more. Jackie, uh, can you tell us the 66 win in the league and uh, championship? Well, it's seeing that this is a 19, uh, well, the Mastrum uh, function tonight, as it was. I was at the final in the junior final in 66, uh, although I wasn't playing for a Mastrum at that time, I was away. and. Uh, I think a few things stands out in my mind. I remember Pat Sweeney's winning goal and uh, the, all the Smiths brothers running about to that. Uh, they were flyers, but they were young. And, and I think that particular victory was the most important victory for the Mastrum Club because it got fellas used to winning. It was the build-up then to 67 and then later on to 74. And I think uh, it was really the most important victory uh, ever by a Mastrum team, the, the junior championship victory of 66. You know, there was great... Uh, I remember coming uh, back to the town that night and we were in Jimmy McGovern's pub and, and uh, the man um, uh, of the Longford News, uh, the, the Vincent Gill, was there with the camera and I remember we had a great night. And uh, I think uh, everyone was really, uh, you know, so proud of that particular team. Uh, great friends of mine who I went to school with played on that team, uh, Seamus Hagen, who wasn't here tonight. And uh, Seamus was a great footballer as well. And uh, yeah, that's just, uh, I, but uh, all in all, it was a great victory. And, and I think the, the, uh, the function tonight, I think, was excellent. It was, it was very good. And uh, everyone done a great job. And I was delighted to see Tommy McLaughlin uh, getting that award because Tommy has really done you know, his life, Mr. yeah, so that's for sure, for, you know, and maybe more, you know. Can you tell us something, Jackie, about your win in the Croke Park in 66? Oh, I can, so what can you remember about that match? I can't remember much, but I remember all the excitement afterwards, like, that we beat Galway, of course, we were complete underdogs, Galway were after winning two All-Irelands, and we were lucky to win on the day by a pint, so, but that was a major victory too, you know, so. 66 was a great year for Mastrum, it was, yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jackie. Jackie spent a lot of time with the underage football in Edgerstown for 20 years before now, 
I've, on my right here, I've Eddie Duffy, who played on the half-forward line, I think, in the 66 team. Eddie, what can you remember about that great victory in 66? Very, very little, Seamus, to be honest with you now. Uh, I think I was replaced after half-time, anyway. I think Pat Sweeney came in for me and scored the goal, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a good move at the time, anyway, seemingly. Uh, uh, I can I can very uh, uh, no very little now to be honest, uh, uh, Seamus. What does it feel like been here tonight now meeting all the pals from 25 years ago? You haven't seen some of them. It's, it's great, and it was great for the club to put on this uh, uh, function. They like, can so it, it's it's bound to be a great help for uh, <coughs> for all the young fellas too that sees it and the organisation that went into it. They like, can so credit to the club to the offices to do it anyway like and i was very pleased with uh, i didn't think that it it was going to be done at such an effort was going to be put into it now to be honest with you know like, it's great now uh, it's credit it's to them very now and, oh, very oh it was great now it was great night now and well done now everything was lovely now thanks very much eddie for those very nice words ladies and gentlemen of two more very prominent members of this great 1966-67 outfit on my right i have um, John Jugger Christ here, who didn't play in the final but played in all the games up to that. And on my left, I have Jimmy McGovern, who's known in Mostern football for well as more years than I'd like to say um, as a selector on 66 and 67 team. First, I'll go to John Joe. What's his recollection of the final and the matches leading up to the final, John Joe? Well, not a lot. As my memory is going now. I'm getting old. You're no older than the rest of us. But, um Remember the hard training that uh, Gerald Feely pushed through in the field of out running and one side of the field to the other and you meet halfway as and go back and and uh, jumping, frog jumping. Killing yourself. Killing yourself, that's right. And uh, then we had the uh, contest with backs and forwards. And uh, well, it was some tough going, nearly tougher than the matches themselves. Do you remember that enough the particular match itself, John Joe? Well, not a lot. When we were fairly nervous for a while, we got going. Once we got settled into it, we're our usual. But you got the Pat Sweeney magic goal everybody seems to be talking about. Sweeney magic, all right. No doubt about it. Real Daisy cutter. Right, thanks very much, John Joe. On my left, I have Jimmy McGovern. Jimmy owned a pub in Edgerstown some many, many years ago. Jimmy was selector on that team. Jimmy, what's your recollection of the 66 match? Uh, I know I was locked out of the dressing room after anyway. Uh, uh, there was some argument on the sideline and we were, we put out the stand and I was wanting to go too. So when we came back around the field, uh, we weren't let into the dressing room and that was the worst part of it. But uh, we got through it anyway. Uh, I just, I forget parts of the match now. Um, what to say? Uh, I remember... I always remember uh, Paddy Sweeney's goal. I knew we had it. And in the early stages, I thought we were going to blow it again. That Phil Dunner got a goal after a few minutes. And I thought, we, this is it again. We're gone for another year. But uh, the lads kept it going, and we won it. And that was the greatest day ever, I suppose, in Edgerstown. Mm. You were also involved in 67, but you weren't around. You were gone to America after the team had been picked. We picked the team on a Thursday night. And um, I had to go to America the next day and uh, didn't know the result. I wrote back and couldn't find the result, but I eventually found that the cup was in Smith. That's all I was told. There was no celebrations much as such. So that we, uh, our biggest disappointment was uh, the semi final again, Arda. Uh, we beat Arda in the semi final, but um, Eddie Doherty got concussion after the match, and Brian Smith was ruled out of football. We thought, and uh, it came all right that uh, Brian came all right. We were supposed to have heart trouble at the time, but that was a big dis big disappointment to us that day. But uh, in a week or two, it all came straight, so we won it anyway. Over to you, Seamus. Thanks very much, Jimmy, and thanks very much, John Joe. I have um, two more gentlemen here with me. On my left, I have Michael McCormick, who's present there. Minor chairman of the board here in Edmastrum, and on my right, of Kieran Duffy, Kieran who made the long trip from London to be with us on this special night, and I'll ask Kieran what he thought about Mastrum football back in the 60s. Kieran was part of the 66 panel, so Kieran, over to you. Thanks very much, Seamus. My fondest mem memories are 1958 
uh, in the county minor final against Longford Slashers and uh, unfortunately we were beaten by one point. Uh, Longford Slashers had eight county minors on that particular day and uh, we had one county minor, Jackie Devine was playing for us that day and we were very unfortunate to be beaten by a superior team on the day. Thanks very much, Ernest. Do you remember anything at all about the 66 outfit? You must have uh, some recollections of that. Certainly, I, I didn't play in the final because of injury. I was living in London at the time, and uh, I remember various telegrams over the previous months from the Crippen Divine asking me to come, come and play in various and different games. It was a great, a great year and a great success, but unfortunately, because of injury, I was unable to make the final. And uh, the Smith brothers are the outstanding people in my time anyway. Thanks very much, Kieran. Kieran, like I said, made the trip from London, and I'd like to wish him a safe journey on his way back, himself and his wife. Thank you very much, Kieran. On my left of Michael McCormack, like I said earlier on, Michael is chairman of the Minor Club, and the Minor Club had unbelievable success in Mostrim this year. We contested seven, eight finals in 1991, and won seven of them. So I'd like a few words from Michael on that. Thanks, Seamus. Sh um, this is my fifth year um, involved in the minor club. We hadn't much success in the last four years, but this year it was unbelievable. It would not be possible without the panel of players we had under 14 school boys. School boys done very well. They won the um, school boy league, the championship, which was never won before in the history of the club. That horse goes down. That horse goes down to Seamus Smith. Well, um, they won the fail as well which is very hard one. So we're not on under 14, the first tournament was always the failure. Went on, bet, beat Northern Gales, done well, beating an All-Ireland, B All-Ireland final, wasn't it? Um, with St. Lomans, which should have been probably an A team. Um, can't think now. Won the league final in under 14. Uh, should have won the under 14 championship, we just fell asleep for five minutes and two, two or three goals in the last couple of minutes for Behas. We also won the juvenile championship, juvenile league and the Michael Curley tournament and as I said, it's, it's, not, it's not possible without Seamus Smith, Noel Green, Paddy Casey, Pat Keane and Seamus Catrice and that's all I have to say. I'm glad, to be, I'm delighted to be a member of the team. Thanks. Thank you. Hand you all to Jeremy. Thanks very much, Michael. Um, you didn't know. On my right here, I have Sean Feely with me. Sean was a uh, member of the Garda Shiakana way back in '66 when Mostrin football was down in the dumps, and he decided he'd take over the training of this team in 1966. And what a job he done with it. Sean, what can you remember of that 1966-67 team? Well, I remember I, I came to um, Edgerstown in '64. And the first man I met was uh, Michael Green down at the church, and uh, he shook hands with me. And I asked him, had you a football team? And he says, we have a bad junior team. <laughs> and I said, God, my luck is in. I'm, I'm landing in a right town. So I started playing down in the field with the lads. I was training with them. And uh, it was in 1966. I took very little interest in the local team until they were nearly up in the county final. And uh, Ned Riley was to train them. And something happened that he didn't turn up one evening. And I took over. And I re really was delighted. It was a great I got a great kick out of it. I got, what, about two, three weeks at it. And uh, I got a great kick out of that. And the, uh, there was a lot of young lads, very young lads, and there was a few very old lads. And they just about won that day. And uh, the, then I trained them for the intermediate the following year. And I'll always remember, uh, they were always great friends of mine, and still are, and I was delighted to be involved with them. And it's an honor to me to be here tonight with them. Thank you very much Sean. Sean later on played himself in the green and red for Mostrim in several occasions and he's made the trip from Letter Kenny. County Donegal tonight and I'd like to thank Sean very very much and his wife for coming up here tonight. Thank you very much Sean. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you Sean. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen we have two more members of this 66-67 panel here beside me. On my left I have Harry Devine who came down from Mullingar for the night and on my right I have PJ Quinn. We start off with PJ. PJ, what can you remember about that 66-67 match? 
Nachher lag ich ja mit dem Gas in 66 auf der See. Das war in England dann. Und dann habe ich ein Jahr nicht in der Sommer of 67. Und was erinnert ihr über das Spiel? Du warst in diesem Finale. Kannst du mir sagen, was erinnert ihr über das Spiel selbst? Ich kam in als ein Sub. And uh, I don't remember much about it. I mean, <laughs> I'm getting old now. My memory is well. <laughs> like I said to some of the rest of the lads, you're getting older than the rest of us. You took part in that game. What do you think of the night and meeting the lads for definitely met Harry here, I'd say, for quite a few years, or Kieran Duffy, or the rest of the lads. What do you think of the night in general? It's a marvelous night. I think it's a great... I'm very grateful to the club for inviting me, and uh, I think it's a marvelous night. I think, you know, it's something that every club should do from time to time. And please God, There'll be many more anniversaries to celebrate. Thanks very much, PJ. It's a pleasure having you here as well tonight. I'll go over to Harry here. Harry came down from Mullingar, like I said, and Harry played in the previous minor teams around the town for years and years. What can you remember about the 66 final in particular, Harry? I can't remember an awful lot, uh, um I'm not like the old sages here who have elephants' memories. <laughs> John Green you're talking about there now. Yes, John would be one of those guys that I was alluding to. But uh, there are a few things I remember. I remember um, I remember playing a corner forward, a position that I didn't like. It's a kind of a graveyard for a footballer. And r I remember a little guy called John Smith who came in and took my position. I moved out to the half forward line. And r he, it was uh, John made a big impact when he came in. He was only a young lad that time, but he, he went on, as we all know, to become a great player. You know, um, I remember. Uh, the two wing half backs. <laughs> I think you might know one of them anyway. Yeah, you probably know the other two Smiths and the fella in the middle that was after coming home from America, Tom McLaughlin. And uh, it's great to see the three guys, to see those guys tonight. It's great to see all the guys, but, uh, and it was wonderful to see Tom McLaughlin. I think it was uh, long overdue, I yeah, suppose. Uh, terrific, yeah, and it was great that he didn't know about it as well, you know. And it was very appropriate. He's still very involved with the club. Um, I, I think about that victory, you know, I remember as a kid growing up, it, this is not necessarily the game, but the, the significance of the, of, the, of the win, because as we were kids growing up, Edgerstown, they were always the, the whipping boys for everybody. We could beat nobody, and uh, we were the poor relations. The best we could hope to do was win a loser's competition. But uh, a lot of guys got together. There was a lot of young lads came on that time. We had veterans, but we had a lot of young lads as well. And to win that game that particular day, for me anyway, it was it was a watershed. It was historic because it lit a flame, right, and the club went from the club went from there. And I mean, I was talking to Pat earlier on there tonight, and we talk about um, being beaten in finals. What do we have to do to win finals? There's an awful lot of clubs who give anything to be there in the final. It's a far cry from the 60s, early 60s, when we couldn't even win a junior losers competition. We're right up there. It's terrific, and I think what happened tonight. Uh, all those guys, Kieran and uh, Pat, and all those guys being invited back. I think that's what, yeah, think that's what football's all about. And that's what the association is about. And it's, I think it's great. That I think it's. Uh, I'd like to pay, take this opportunity to compliment the club uh, for doing that as well. I think it was a, a wonderful gesture. I'm very thankful, certainly, to be back. But of course, I never lost interest. Yeah. I'm always there uh, when, they, when they get to the final or whatever. You know, it's great. Uh, thanks very much, Jonas. Thanks very much, Harry. Harry is also involved in a big way in Mullingar and the underage football. So I'd like to thank uh, Harry on my left here and PJ. Thanks very much, lads. I have um, two more fellas here with me. On my left, I have one of the younger players of the club who was clubman of the year tonight, Joe Hines. And on my right, I have a little bit older, but not too old yet, Pat Hughes. Pat was part of that 67 winning intermediate team, and he's also has a big hand in the senior football in the parish at the moment. So, Pat, what's your recollections of the 68, 67 match? Do you remember anything about it at all, Pat? Uh, nothing really at all. Um, I suppose I was just like the chap here on my uh, left here. He, I was very young at the time. And my biggest recollection is that uh, I was in St. Mel's and uh, myself and Pat Kearney looked for the day off and uh, we were granted time off to play in the match but not to we had we had, we had to return after the match and uh, it was a big disappointment to us to, uh, in actual fact to have to come back after the match and uh, yes we missed out on all the celebrations i suppose as a young fella it was the celebrations i was looking forward to more than the match uh i think pat sweeney's goal in in uh, 66 sticks out in my mind more than anything else 
I was in, in Pierce Park that day and I can still see it in my mind. It's one of the great moments that I, I, I can look back on was uh, Pat Sweeney's goal. Uh, I suppose it was a build up and uh, just the goal that won the match. And I can remember it clearly, it still sticks out in my mind. That I, can, I can nearly, uh, if you could put it on video, if you could play my mind on video, I could just play the match at that particular point. It was a tremendous, yeah. Um, otherwise, I would just like the guy here, very, very small. I think, uh, I was joking here tonight, I think it was only around the eight at the time. But uh, it was a good prospect, and I'll put it near that. So, thanks very much, Jimmy. Thanks very much, Pat. Pat is also, like I said, big into senior football at the moment in Edgerton. has a big part to play in the seniors. And maybe next year we'll bring back the Connolly Cup. One of the men I'm hoping to bring this Connolly Cup back in the near future is Joe Hines, a very prominent young player. He's won under-16 championship and league with the Pirates this year. And he's also represented the county at under-16 level. Joe, can you um, give us a few words on how you enjoyed 1991 as a footballer in the underage grade? It's been a great year for Edgerton. Like we've we've never won anything before with this team. Like Mark Cassie and all the boys, we've never won anything before. Like we've won the the B Championship this year and the league and the and the Gurley Cup and like took we trained hard for it and we knew we could do it. We knew we could win something if we tried to put the effort in. Yeah. Well, this is the one young fella here that really put a big effort in, and it's a great credit to him and to the mentors of the team, the other 16 team, and I'd like to congratulate him on his fine achievement in winning Clubman of the Year. You must be a proud young man tonight. Yeah, I am, but, like, I couldn't have done it without the uh, other players. They they backed me 100% of the way, like, and I'd like to thank um, Noel and Michael for training us all year. They've done a great job in training this team. There's a modest young man. Thank you very much, Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two more prominent members of the GA and Mostrim. On my left, I have one of the young players of the future and of the present, Damien Doherty, who was presented tonight by the Clubman of the Year on my left. And on my right, I have John McGarr, previous vice chairman of the club and selector on numerous occasions. I'll ask John first, uh, can you give me a few comments about GA in general in the parish? John has been involved in GA and all his family for 100 years or more. I'll hand it over to John now for a few minutes. Well, um, during my time in Gaelic football, uh, we had uh, only a, mostly a junior team. We were going back into the 40s and the early 50s. And uh, we, uh, I think that uh, the 1966-67 was when we got on the, um, we had a really good team and a young team. And uh, they went on then into the, uh, sep 70s and uh, from the 70s on uh, we were on a rising tide all the time and uh, we from 67 to 74 uh, we were nearly there a good few times in 73 we played Trungish and three three times and I think but for the cleverness of Bertie Allen God be good to him uh, who got his team off the field that evening very fast. I think we probably would have beaten Sungish on that occasion. He refused to play extra time that evening, is that right? Well, I think uh, by the time they would have been got back on the field, it would have been dark. So uh, Bertie was no fool when it come to GA and tactics. And uh, then the next year, uh, we got off to a great start and uh, everything seemed to run well for us. And in the final, I remember uh, being a selector that uh, while we were playing Arda, and uh, we were there or thereabouts, but things we weren't getting the scores. And we took Paddy Noonan off the bench, and uh, Paddy had left football earlier than he should have, I think, but he, um, he really uh, set us ablaze. He got a pint, the first ball he got, and then he got the goal that really made the difference. So I think that uh, I was very proud to be associated with the team during those times. And uh, I think that uh, we're not finished yet. I think we've got to, I think, six or seven finals in eight years, is it? And we lost a good few of them. And people say it was a disaster. I don't think it was a disaster. I think there's a lot of clubs and would love to be in a final. I played a lot of games. And 
never got to a final unless a junior final in 1958. And uh, I think that uh, I think the club is still going to be in more finals and hopefully will win more finals because uh, due to the efforts of this man here and uh, a few more with him, we have great underage teams and I think there's a bright future for football in Edgerstown. At least I hope there is. Thank you very much, John. On my left, I have Damien Darley, like I said earlier on. Damien is Clubman of the Year 1992, and he's a credit to the parish and to the county. And um, he had a big operation earlier on in the year and um, put him out of football, which was unfortunate, which we could have got on and won maybe the league and the championship. But I'll ask Damien for a few words now about the present day of football in Mastrum. Well, I think... Uh, I, th I think... Uh, the future in Edgerstown is very good now. There's a lot of young players coming up. Uh, the likes of Jack Lynn now, I thought now myself, he was in a member. I thought he himself now, he, he, was, he should have been selected for club man of the year. Like he was, he was, like you know, he was very, he's, he, he's the most improved footballer in Edgerstown at the moment. And you have Parley Connell now that he's a new CD at the moment, but he was well capable of getting on the senior team next year now. and. We have a lot of young footballers coming up, Seamus Duffy, Eugene McGuire, and we have a lot of young, we have a lot of young footballers coming up now, you know. And I think Edgerstown will be very strong in the future, and I think we have a championship winning team soon to come anyway. What do you think of the night in general? These old folks that you're looking at there, your dad now received the trophy tonight, the first time in 25 years. I bet you felt a bit proud about him out there tonight. Ah, yeah, I'm proud of my father. Like, I heard he was a great footballer in his day, like, you know, so... Like, he's always telling me about it anyway. Well, he was telling you the truth because he was one of the best. Another modest young man we have here tonight. I think he was entitled to Man of the Year, Club Man of the Year. And thank you very much, Damien. Thanks a lot, Shamie. Oh. On my right, Shane. Oh, here next to you. I have two more members here. On my right, um, Sean Hannon, who was a member of the 66 and 67 panel. And on my left, I have Shane Dockery treasurer of the club in the past and Shane is one of the actually one of our most ardent supporters no matter when we came up to town this year with the trophy Shane was the first man to meet us on top of Pound Street so I'd like to start off with Sean can you tell me anything about the 66-67 match Sean uh, well uh, back in 1966-7 uh, and seven, I think that I came into uh, football uh, that was my first time ever in my life to play Gilly football and I think that uh, the members of the team at that time, and uh, they'd done an awful lot for me. I made, a, I made uh, something out of me, I made responsibility to, to me and to members of the club that I, uh, coming from a background of where I was, my father was only after dying, and uh, I think that uh, it surely done an awful lot for me at that time. Do you remember anything about the 66 or 67 final in general? Uh, I remember the 60, uh, 67 one. I, ha I didn't play in the 66 one, but I remember the 67 one in particular. And I, I, I remember I was sub on that team on the day, and I came into playing it, and I thought that it was the greatest day of my life that I ever would see myself playing a match for Edgerstown. Uh, and I think that uh, it, it proved the point that uh, of the people that was there at the time and, and the respect and the way that, that they would encourage you to go on to play football and to play for your, for your club. And I, think, uh, and I think that the club uh, meant so much to me and to this day and that I could live ever to see anyone belong to me playing for Edgerton, it would probably be my best wishes. Very nice words there from Sean. Thank you very much. On my left, like I said, I have one of the most ardent supporters of Gaelic football in Mastrim, Shane Dockery. I'd like to have a your opinion, Shane, on 66 and to the present day? Well, there were great uh, days, and um, it was really the, the beginning of a, of a, a very successful career to the club here in Edgerstown. Now, I was involved only as a, tra a joint treasurer with my, my, my neighbour, Michael Heavey, Pound Street men. And uh, we were fortunate to be there at, I uh, suppose, a very uh, memorable time when the dressing rooms and the first development uh, started in the field. And um, it'll always be in my mind, you know, going round to the parish homes and collecting the money. And uh, it was the beginning of a new era in the club. Before that, it was the back of the field or 
if people can remember, it was Bernie Hughes's uh, sh shed that was used for cattle, and oftentimes in the winter, you wouldn't be able to get in with the muck around it. But w the club survived, and today they're one of the four uh, foremost clubs in the county, which is a great tribute. Sorry to the uh, to the GA in general, and um, it'll GA all down the years has have been so prominent in rural life, life in Ireland, in country areas and small towns, without the Sunday afternoon football match, it could have been very dull for people, people wouldn't have met to talk about the following week or the previous week's football game, it was always a terrific talking point. Um, life in Ireland had been different, we're joining the EC now and uh, we're joining a new we're jo joining a new beginning to Irish life, um, <laughs> but the GAA had been so many years in bad times and good. On a Sunday, in the evenings, in the summer, in the spring, in the autumn time, it always provided such great entertainment for the young and not so young and it was a, a focal point in Ireland year, years ago and still is years after. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Ian. Very nice words there. Ladies and gentlemen, I have three more very prominent people of the Mostrom GA. On the far right, George Scott, who is one of the top promoters in the club for the last 20 years. George brings in more money to the club, I think, than any other individual in the parish. In the middle is Margaret Heavey playing at right full back. And on my left is Betty Mulhair, the present treasurer of the club. Margaret in the middle, by the way, was secretary of the club in the good old days back in 75, 70, 85, sorry, when we won the last senior football championship. And I'd like to ask um, Margaret's views on that particular game and the present GA in Master in, in general. Very leading question. <laughs> Well, I mean, all I remember about 85 was it was such, after those drawn games, I mean, it was unbelievable to win in the end. There was such excitement in the town for weeks before and weeks after the game. And, I mean, I barely remember the 74 final, so I wasn't really, I didn't know what it was going to be like. And it was just unbelievable, and it was great to win. And I know we can win again at some stage. We've, we've been to finals, I don't know, I think it's six finals in the last six or seven years. So, I mean, we're quite capable of winning again. And I know we will win again because we've had such a, a brilliant underage team, which you are responsible for, Seamus, solely, practically. But I know when they come up, we're going to have good teams for the future too, which looks great. But um, that's about it. You're also involved in score, Margaret, and Betty here beside me is also involved in score, and I think I'll get Betty to answer that one. No. <laughs> Margaret, Betty is a bit um, shy at the moment. Margaret, your involvement in score is very big. Well, we've been involved in score for a good few years now, and we've won at senior and junior level, and we've won clubs of the year num numerous times, not boasting or anything, although I suppose we should boast because we've been doing so well. And actually this year we're in uh, the Leinster final in the Gaiety, later this month with our ballot group on, in junior score and we've got to the, ga the Leinster final before with uh, senior and junior so we haven't got to an All-Ireland yet but we are hoping soon because we have such talent in the parish it's not just on the playing pitch it's uh, in all areas in the GA and um, you were asking about what the GA meant but I mean apart from on the field um, of play we have uh, as I said all the social outlets of the GA and I mean there's kids in the town who would have been lost without the G you know without score Betty would know that I mean it's really brought them out of themselves some kids that never would have had a chance to take part in competitions and it's been great right thanks very much George Margaret and Betty thank you very much <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of two very prominent members of the GA one from Mostrum here on my left Noel Green who is present vice chairman of the club and on my right, Father Sean from Tyrone. I go right into Noel first. Noel is vice chairman, like I said, of the club and very much involved in the under 16 and minor club in general. Noel, can you give me your views on the under 16s and underage in general this year? 
Well, this year, Seamus, as you know, we had a very successful year at Underage. Indeed, most of the credit must go to yourself for the success of the school boys and under-14s won all games at the play, I think, except the under-14 championship. The juveniles certainly had a great year as well in that they won the county B championship, uh, they won the league, and they also won the uh, McCurley Cup there quite recently, which was played in the Hugh Devine Park. So, yeah, certainly it was a great year for the juveniles. Uh, the minors, we were, we were a bit short of, of minors this year. We were amalgamated with uh, Abilara for the championship. And we gave Clangish a very close run in the first round. Unfortunately, in the end of the day, we were beaten by two points. Well, Noel, um, you also had a big hand in organising this night here tonight, along with the rest of the officers. How do you think the night turned out? I think the night was a tremendous success. We were delighted to see so many of the uh, new, of the old faces back tonight. I think we had 30 out of 34 which we were delighted with. It was a very successful night indeed, and I think everybody enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Noel. On my right, I have Father Sean from County Tyrone. Father Sean was involved with the training of the Tyrone Senior Arma, sorry, team in recent years, and also manager of the All-Stars who toured America recently. Can you tell us something about that, Father? Well, uh, first, Jim, as I'd like to say, I was delighted to be here tonight. And as Noel just had to say, it was great to see so many of those players with, uh, after 25 years, still being present. As regards uh, the management of the All-Stars, all of Arma, I always find that any sale of the GA is a very important sale. And I thought that tonight was a great tribute to men who had played 25 years ago. And equally important, and maybe more important, is the club scene, uh, because it's like... Uh, the small sales that makes up the, the strength of the counties, and indeed Mostyn would be seen as a very favourable and very strong sale of the GA in county, not alone in County Longford, uh, but in incidents throughout the country. Thank you very much, Father. Um, you also said there about the, the link between GA people. I think GA people get together no matter where part of the country they go, for. they're from north to south of the border. They have a very, very close tie with each other. Well, I, I think that is very true, and, and there's not a county in Ireland that any real GA man can't find a home, he'll always find friends, and no matter what social event a uh, GA man will go to, he will always find a deep conversation, because the game is practically the same from one end of the country to the other, and the same aims and interest in the GA is always to promote harmony and goodwill among their own parish first, and throughout the county, and throughout the country. Thank you very much, Father Sean. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about brings the night to a close, which was a very, very memorable night in Mostyn football. 25th, 5th anniversary of both the 1966 winning championship team and the 1967 team. Great credit must go to the organisers. Everybody took part of all the players who turned up for the night, and everybody seemed to enjoy their night and have a great night. Thanks very much. <laughs>